trompe l'œil. We will paint a white metal elevator door to match this existing door on the opposite wall to better the vestibule. Ryan has laid out the door, matching the measurements from our control door, and is using a fast dry oil mixture of 4 to 1 white spirits to linseed oil ratio plus dryer. Due to the draft coming from the elevator shaft, slow dry water mediums freeze but do not cure to the base coat making oil our top choice. Ryan is using a vignette brush over a pre-glazed and flog surface wet on wet to create the erratic figures of the paint grade grain of our control door. For most graining we highly recommend taping each section off to make your work cleaner and tighter. For the door frames and surrounding millwork we mix semi-slow drying acrylic glazes for speed since the surface area is smaller and is not affected by the elevator shaft's constant burst of air. Once dry, we add a unifying coat of glaze for morays and flames to the door and overgrain the trim. I lack a lot of footage on the wood, but let's rewind to the control door and take a closer look at how light reveals the dimensions of the door molding. The location of your light source is the single most important factor for this technique. Let's isolate the lower panel and cast a light from above at a 30 degree angle or so towards the right. We need to deceive the eye. And to do so, we mimic the highlights and shadows and the form they take on over architectural detail. We need to identify the brightest highlight to the darkest shadow. Now I've moved my object in relation to the elevator door panel, changing the light at a 30 degree angle thrown left. There is a diagram of the panel's top horizontal molding. These forms change based on the object's location in relation to the light. The brightest highlight is just above the defining edge. The gradients are painted with a fade of softening effect. Next, shadow and highlight to loosely add depth. And lastly, our darkest shadow to show an inset panel. To keep things concise, I've only shown one of four parts here. I'll paint a second later, which will have to suffice as an introduction to Trump Loy. Here is the shadow color. The most important aspect of deception is the mixing of the proper color. Shadows are not always black and highlights are not necessarily white. As you see when painting our defining edge and beginning our darkest shadow and gradient shadow, it is important to map out your measurements, as Ryan did prior to wood greening. A simple thing can be very costly if not done in the beginning. In this close-up, notice the fade technique in the gradient shadow. In doing the other parts of the molding, flipping the form or perspective of light is sometimes confusing. The location of shadows and highlights slightly shift between defining edges. Again, measuring must be precise or it will look wrong. Angles and corners should match accordingly as well as your brightest highlight and darkest shadow. When doing multiple doors or surfaces within a room, working systematically by steps is a must to avoid major errors. Go back, add your final measurements and elements, and add another coat to where your darkest shadow is to pull it out of the surface. Clean your brushes, or better yet, grab a new set for precision. Have your mix color, and let's do some highlights. The first highlight will be the brightest highlight. Next I'll add in a gradient highlight. It is always best to have a visual reference of the form you are painting in the room that it is being placed so you can see the variations of intensity and width when the light is closer in proximity and farther away. Also, if you are painting off location, the kind of light can alter the form and color as well. Sometimes we are asked to do multiple door panels out of town, and to avoid travel time and costs, we paint them on canvas with about 85% completion, and while on location, make the necessary alterations to fit the actual space and light. This is obviously the painted version, and I'll demonstrate by placing my hand on the molding. You can see the close-up of the graining and how the colors I mix for the trompe l'oeil deceivingly look black and white once painted. I want to emphasize this point. Shadows and highlights take on the color of the object and the background at which the object is presented. If you are painting an object on a blue background, for example, the colors will take on the blue hue. Here again is the actual control door along with an Italian plaster we did for the walls that complement our painted wood or faux bois. Yes, a small space, yet intimate in its sophistication. 
You can see the details I added later in the two vertical portions of the molding and how they butt up against the horizontals. You can take it further and add drop shadows based on angles and be more precise with placements of the elements. Troploi goes way beyond these basics and I hope this video gave you a small stepping stone in the introduction of the subject. Cheers.